Peggy 18. Hello and welcome to Far Cry 4 Map Editor Tutorial for Consoles. So this is our main menu. You can see here over on the right side on Chronicles, we have Battles of Curat, which is our multiplayer. We have the Map Browser, the Map Editor, and the Keys to Curat. So we're just going to go select the Map Editor and go in there. So you can see our basic Map Editor options. We've got four options under create new map. We've got assault, hunt here, which is uh, killing animals. We have our outpost, which is a replica of a basic outpost in Far Cry. And we have the extraction mode, which is uh, tasks the player to reach a specified location. And then over here under local maps, we just have all my maps, which will show you all the maps that you have created, whether they've been published or not. And then downloaded maps are maps that other people have created, which you have downloaded. So I'm just going to jump over here to Outpost and uh, select that one. Alright, so here we can now uh, pick our different terrain types. So there's an empty map, which is just blank. Let's so do whatever you want with. And then we also have some mountains, and the Shangri-La Mountains, the regular island, and the Shangri-La Island. So I'm just going to go back to the mountains here, and I'm going to select that to start with. So here we are in our freshly generated mountain map. Now the first thing I want to do is I'll just talk about the camera controls. So using the left stick, I can pan the camera around to the left and to the right, as well as zoom in and out. It's up and down. Then by using the right stick, I'm able to tilt or turn the camera around, left, right, and up and down, as usual. And then by uh, holding down R1, I'm able to move the camera up and down using the left stick. Alright, so with basic camera movement out of the way, let's talk about manipulating the terrain of our map. So I'm going to open up my toolbox here by hitting L1. See, we've got some different options here at the first level. We've got terrain, we've got our gameplay objects, we've got add new objects, and we have add AI. We'll get into each of these later, but first let's grab terrain. And here we've got our terrain tools. I'm just going to go again here into the terrain tools themselves. And I'm going to grab the flatten tool here. So now, with this tool selected, you see I've got this menu here on the left. So I can select different options in the menu with up and down on the D-pad, and then I can manipulate those options using left and right. So to change the radius or speed or anything like that. So now, so the way flatten works is it will just take the kind of center of your flattened circle there and make all the terrain within the circle that height. So now, if I uh, click down and hold our R3 button, you'll see it gives me some different options now here at the bottom of the screen relating with the D-pad. So if I push left on the D-pad, it will undo the last thing we did, which was to flatten all of our terrain there. And letting go of R3 returns everything to normal. We still have our flatten tool selected. So I'm just going to go in here and just flatten out this area. This really helps to make it an easier surface to work with. You don't have to worry about buildings being on weird tilts or objects sinking into the ground or popping up some. A nice flat area is just a really good thing to start with. So let's just get that all taken care of. You'll notice as I flatten the terrain here that uh, the vegetation actually moves with the terrain to compensate for the movement. So you don't need to worry about replacing any vegetation or anything that you've already had in play 
once you start manipulating the terrain. Alright, with our area nice and flattened out here, I'm going to get rid of some of these sharp cliff edges we've got going on around the outside. So I'm just going to hit L1 again to return to my toolbox, go down here and grab the smooth tool. Well, here it is, once again, we've got a big circle. Uh, using the D-pad, I can select my options on the menu on the left, or manipulate them if I want to. Let's just leave them on their default state right now, no problem. So just if I run the smooth tool here, just along these edges, you can see that it just nicely smooths out these harsh, sharp cliffs that we have as a result of the flattening we did previously. Just makes the area look a little more normal, a little more natural, and uh, yeah, it doesn't seem quite so manufactured thanks to the, the sharp edges. So let's move that around, and all right, we're all set. All right, with our area all set up and good to go, I think it's about time to start placing in some objects. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead open up the toolbox one more time with L1. Now I can back out through the levels just by hitting B. We'll go back to the top level here, and this time we'll select our Add New Objects. So over here now on the left is the menu I can manipulate with the D-pad. I've got our top level of some different types of objects that we can add. So I'm just going to grab the structures here. I'm going to go into small buildings. So all kinds of different ones to choose from. So let's just put something simple down here. This is an easy little guy. So you see the object that I'm placing just simply follows the reticule at the center of the screen. Whether you're panning or zooming or tilting the camera, the object will just follow along and stay in the center at the reticule. So we'll just place that down here. Let's grab another one, something different. Yeah, this looks good. So we'll come over here with it. I can hold down R2 if I want to rotate this object, put it into, into the position that I want. So I can just use the left stick here and get it around. All right, there we go. That's, that's a little better. Put it in position here and just drop it in place. All right, so we've got a couple of small buildings. Let's go in here, take a look at some large buildings. So again, just grab a, a nice easy one here. And we'll go ahead and put him just, yeah, just down right here. All right, good stuff. Let's go back out to our different kinds of structures here. Let's add something else. Let's go into our our stairs and add-ons here. Here we've got a just kind of a shelter, sort of a shack-like thing. We'll put that in as well. Let's go right there. All right. So let's go back out here. We'll go into the objects this time. And number two. Go down. Let's grab uh, some of these flags, clothes, and carpets. Scroll down. Find a, a nice simple one here. A nice animated flag from a prayer line. Let's just go ahead and hang it here on the porch of this building. Nice and easy. You can see it aligns nicely with the... Uh, with the objects already in place, and there it is. It animates and everything. All right, so let's just back out of here. Just using B, we'll go back through the menu and out of our toolbox here, back to our default tool, which is called our picker. You can see it's just represented by the reticule there in the middle. Now you can see if I bring it over an object I've already placed, the reticule turns red, and we see a little bounding box appear around the object that we have selected. We'll check each one of them. You can see that uh, each one has its own box. Now if I hit X when I'm on one of them, I'm now able to move the object. You can see it moves in this manner the same way as when we were placing it. It just affixes to the middle and moves around as you move the camera. Again, the same as placing it, I can hold down R2 and rotate the object in place. 
Yep, that's good for that one. Let's see, let's grab this one here too, give it a little bit of an adjustment. Let's move it over here, give it a bit of a twist. Alright, cool, there we go. So now another thing we need, since this is an outpost, we should place in our alarm. The things, uh, thing that the NPCs will use to summon their allies. So we'll go over here to Gameplay Objects, select that. You see there's just a couple of different objects in here, including our outpost alarm. So let's find a good spot for that. How about over here by these stairs? We'll just give it a bit of a rotation here so it's so the horns are facing the right way. And there we go. We'll put it in place. Now another thing we have here in the gameplay objects is our player spawn point, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is the position where the player will spawn when they start your map. So let's put it up here, give them a nice little overlook when they start the map. Here's a, here's a nice little little space for them. So we'll rotate it, make sure the player is facing the right direction when the map starts, and we'll drop it right there. Perfect. Now we've got a nice little overlook for the player that uh, looks out across our entire map. So now we have our outpost laid out, but we do not have any enemies. Let's go into our toolbox, we'll go into our add AI, See, so we've got different options here. We've got our wave one, our reinforcement, which are the enemies that will show up when the alarm is rung, and then the remaining waves, which will come as we kill the reinforcements. And we also have allies, and we have animation points. Let's just grab wave one here. Again, I can use the D-pad to select things in the menu on the left. So we'll just start with this assaulter right here. We'll just put him on the porch up top. We'll switch over now to the beheader. We'll just put him down over here. And we'll switch up one more time to our berserker. We want him on the roof? Maybe? Maybe over here? Yeah, let's put him up on the roof. Alright, so there we go. That'll be our wave one set of enemies. We'll push B back to the toolbox and grab our reinforcements. You can see we have the same options on the left, same enemies, and you'll see that now the enemy is represented by this gray mannequin, which just means it won't be there when the map starts, but will spawn at the appropriate time, which for these guys is when the alarm is rung. So let's put them over here in the woods, so they have to approach the outpost once the alarm has been rung, and it will also kind of hide their spawning so the player doesn't see them pop in because we're, they're all out here in the woods. So let's put out some variety here, a couple of different types of enemies, and make sure to rotate them so they come in facing the correct direction. All right, there we go. So we've got buildings, we've got enemies, we've got an alarm, we've got a spawn point. Looks like things are all right. I'm just gonna push options here to open up their option menu. You see just up to the top left there is play. I'll just select that. And here we are, inside our map. You can see we've spawned at our spawn point. If I bring up my camera here, you can see that the enemies that we placed are right where they belong. Alright, that's all good stuff. Let's just run on down there. Maybe get a closer look. Swoop in on our wingsuit here. Yeah, everything looks in order. Alright, excellent. Well, our outpost now is pretty basic, so let's go ahead and start adding some more flourishes. I think let's, uh, let's start with vehicles. So let's go down here to our Add New Objects. You can see vehicles here at number 5. Go to that and we'll select the mobile ones, which means these are vehicles that uh, the player or the AI can drive. So lots of different vehicles in here. Just grab uh, like this little van here, so we can place that with the X button. Go down. So here, how about uh, one of these jeeps with uh, the mounted machine gun? Let's see, these ones are pretty good. So there we go. So once again, we can just place by uh, hitting the X button. 
And then uh, if you want more, you can just keep hitting that X button and keep getting Jeeps. So I think that's about enough for now. So now we should uh, kind of talk about selecting the, these, uh, selecting the objects. So you can select uh, multiple objects at a time by using R2. So see if I highlight this object, and I hit R2, the bounding box around it turns red, which means it's part of a group selection. And so now I can add to that group selection by highlighting objects and just hitting R2, and they become part of that group. When I hit X, that group is now selected, and they can be moved like any normal object. Then I can delete them here by just hitting triangle. Now the whole group is gone. I'll just undo that to bring them back. And then now another way that you can do a group selection is if you're holding down R2, you can move the stick and select more or less objects. You can see that the bounding box changes and surrounds any objects that we have selected. And then uh, again, just X to actually grab them. You can move them as normal and delete them with triangle. And uh, we'll just undo that again one more time and get those jeeps back. There we go. So uh, then now one final thing that we can also do is delete ev all of the same type of object. So if you have an object selected and you hit square, you'll see here now we've got delete similar objects as an option select that and confirm and there you go all jeeps are now gone but uh, we do want uh, at least one of our jeeps here so we'll just undo that again get them all back just do uh, a quick group selection here get these three selected and just get rid of them there we go so now we just have our van and our jeep just bring the van in a little closer here we'll, uh, just do another group selection to grab them both at once and let's uh, bring them over here into our garage. Let's bring the camera a little closer. Get these vehicles in there. All right, there we go. And then again, as with any singular object, using R2, we can rotate our group here. It rotates around the middle. And uh, just make sure that these vehicles are facing out of the garage. That way, if any of the NPCs or the player wants to grab them, they can just hop in and start driving, and they don't have to we're about going backwards or reversing out of the garage. Alright, so our vehicles are in place. Let's go ahead and add in some more interesting stuff. Let's do uh, some cover. I think and some other objects for to fill out the map. So some will grab objects from our menu. We'll get containers and crates. We'll just start here with our animal cage. And now if you want, you can press L2, and then it's going to add the object to the map and select it right away, so you can continue to manipulate it, like so. So now you can see I no longer have the menu of objects up, but I do have this object grabbed, and I can move it, rotate it, and everything just as normal. So let's uh, place that guy right there. Alright, all set. And you see now that I've done that, I no longer have the objects menu open. So let's go back into here. We'll get containers and crates again. And let's just put some different cover objects around here for the player to use. So we've got some boxes here. Let me drop that there. Let's get something else. Some different kind of boxes. They can go maybe under the stairs. Fill out that area a little bit. Let's see what else we've got here we can offer. Um, here we go. Um, yeah, maybe one of these pallets of drugs. I'll put one over here by this other building. And switch up to this other pallet of drugs. And we can put that there. And maybe something over here as well. Uh, let's see what else we've got we can use. Yeah, here we go. We've got some sandbags. This will do nicely. I'll just uh, we give this a little adjustment. Maybe rotate that. Yeah, there we go. That's a little better. Just put that in place. Alright, let's back out now to our selection tool. And we'll just uh, tweak each of these uh, cover objects now that we have them roughly placed where we want. So we'll just give this guy a little bit of a twist. A minor adjustment there. 
come over here to our pallets of drugs. We'll grab our first one, give it a bit of a twist, and move it in nice and close to the building there. That's uh, pretty good right there. Alright, and now we'll grab the last one here. Again, a little bit of rotation, just makes them look a little less rigid and placed on a grid. We'll drop them right there. Alright, we're all set. So we've got a pretty big open space out here now in front of our outpost. So let's go ahead and add some more natural objects here. So we'll go into nature and we'll grab some rocks. There's lots and lots of different rocks to choose from of all kinds of different sizes. So let's head down, we'll find some slightly smaller rocks, not quite so gargantuan in size. This one's alright, we'll just drop this guy down over here, we'll get something new. There we go, that's a nice one. Somewhere over here, we'll give it a little bit of a twist, once again with R2, get it how we want it. Alright, there we go, I think that's really all we need for, for the number of rocks. So, uh, now... We can also add in some explosive objects that will uh, make this whole thing a little more exciting. So once again, let's return to Add New Objects and go into Objects. You can see there on number 6 is Explosive Props. So we'll grab the second one here, the red explosive barrel. We'll just go in here and uh, place a couple of these around the map. It can just be a cool thing to have in there. and then. You know, if they get struck during a firefight, they'll explode and just make things a little more interesting, a little more dynamic. It's good stuff. So now we'll uh, place this last one here up. We'll put it up on the balcony here on this building. And I'll tell you why here in just a second. So that's pretty good. We'll just give it a little bit of a twist here. Alright, and I'm just going to drop it with L2 so that I have it grabbed now. So now you'll see that since I placed it up high on this balcony, that as I move it around, it does stay in the center at the reticule like normal objects, but it's staying at that same height. It doesn't drop down to the ground or anything like that at all. And so we'll talk about that option here in a second. We'll get this a little close to the building. And so now by holding down R1, I can now use the left stick to bring this object up or down. So if you want to specify the height of something, you can do that. Then also you can see here on the left that I can push down on the D-pad and it will drop it right down to the surface below. So in that case the roof, but over here you can see it will drop all the way down to the terrain underneath. I'll lift it up again, bring it over here to our balcony, and drop it down on there. So yeah, it'll just snap itself down to whatever the closest surface is down below. Alright, we'll put that in its place right there. Now you can see that I can push right on the D-pad, and I will duplicate the object. And then I will have the duplicate here in hand. And also, you'll see here that I can push left on the D-pad to activate this follow terrain. And so that means now, as I move this object around, it will follow the surfaces. So it will move up or down as it hits different objects. And then if I push that again, I've now returned to normal movement, where it will no longer follow the terrain, but will instead just move along these axes. So I'll just get this guy here inside the building. All right. So now we've got cover and we've got explosives and enemies. It's time to do some weapons. So I'll go down to add new objects. You can see number six here is weapons. I'm going to start with some turrets. So we've got a couple different kinds of turrets. We've got this one here on the tripod. And now both the player and the AI can make use of these turrets, so it's good to make sure they're easily accessible. So we'll put one of these machine gun turrets here, let's do another one over here on the roof. We'll actually uh, use our other kind of turret we have, which is this one here, without the tripod. So it's meant to be placed on top of another object, like some cover boxes or this here building ledge. So I'm just going to 
fine-tune the positioning here a little bit, make sure that it's uh, down on the ledge, not sunk in too far. All right, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Excellent. All right, so we can place some uh, pickup weapons as well. So we'll go back into weapons, and this time into number two weapons. We'll go down, let's see here, what do we got? Oh, we've got this uh, sawed-off double barrel shotgun. So we'll drop this guy just down here on the on top of this barrel. All right, uh, that'll do. So you see it's not uh, too natural of a position right now. It's not how a gun would normally lay. So you can see by using, by holding down R2, and I tap L2, I actually switch between which axis I want to rotate on. So here I go, we'll just rotate this so it's more of a natural laying down position that this gun would actually be in. Just do a little bit of fine tuning here, make sure it's not sunk in or floating too high. So a little deep. All right, there we go. That'll do for us for now. Now let's. All right, and let's head over here, and we'll place a pickup, a pickupable gun. We'll grab. Uh, let's see. We've got the A52 here. It's a pretty cool assault rifle. And so we'll we'll put the gun down here, and let's make it look like it's leaning up against our pallet of drugs here. So by holding down R2. I go into rotate mode, and then tapping L2 lets me to uh, switch which axis, axis I'm rotating on. So we'll just rotate it up like that, and adjust its position here a little bit. Alright, so that's good enough for now. So now we've got that gun. Looks like it's leaning up against the, the pallet. It's just what we want. Alright, so we've got guns. It's time for some ammo and some pickups. So we'll go here into the folder of the same name. We'll start out with our ammo pile here, which can be used by the player multiple times to gather up some ammo. And it also explodes when it's shot. So that's pretty cool. We definitely want one of those in here. We'll go over here now to the body armor. Always a good thing to have. Just give it a little tweak here. Rotate it a bit. There we go. Now we'll switch here to a health pack. Another good thing that you want to have in your map, keep your players alive. Let's put this one over here on the other side, maybe up here on the roof. We'll drop this down. Okay. And then here we've got our small ammo, which is the ammunition used by regular weapons like shotguns, machine guns, assault rifles, and that kind of thing. Alright. There we go. A couple of ammunition in place. And that's good. Alright, so now we've got all that in place. So we've currently got a little problem going on over here. See, we've got our guy up here on this rooftop. There's actually no way for him to get off of this roof rooftop, or for the player to get onto it, for that matter. So let's uh, add in a ladder and a ledge, are two different methods of allowing both player and AI to get up. So go add new objects. Here we've got climbing and navigation here at number four. We'll grab that. And we'll start with a ladder. We'll do this 10 step one. It's pretty much exactly what we're looking for. We'll just make sure we rotate it into place so that the steps are on the outside of the ladder. We want it facing the right way. We'll just tuck it in nice and close to the building for now. All right, and then let's go down to the ledges. And let's grab one of these here ledges and we'll put it over here on the other opening, on the other side. We'll just again make sure it's facing the right direction, just do some fine adjustments here, get it into place. It's going to be a little bit more of a tweak here. Alright, there we go. We'll leave it just like that. Perfect, so now we've got a couple of different methods for both the player and the AI to get up onto this rooftop. This ladder doesn't really look that great right now here with it merged into this ledge. So I'm just gonna 
Let's check here in our validation. This is going to tell you anything that's wrong with your map right now. So we've got a list here. You can see the mounted weapon area is not clear. So if I hit X while I have this option selected, I will be brought right to the offending object, which is our, our gun turret here. So apparently it's not clear. It needs a little bit of adjusting. So maybe we'll try bringing it up a bit. Let's see here. It seems okay from for height. Let's check it again. We'll look in validation. Okay, so it's still not clear. So we'll grab it one more time. This time let's pull it back some. Let's give it some more space in the rear. All right, there we go. We're all good. Let's try check it one more time. And there we go, the message is no longer there, so our gun is in the right place. And now while the ladder did pass validation, meaning it is usable, it still doesn't look too great with it merged in like that. So let's just grab it and give it a nice little pull out like that. And there we go. So now let's take a look at our explore option here. So explore is a little different from play and that rather than spawning at your spawn point and playing as normal, you will instead spawn in your current camera position. As well as by default, you will be both invisible to enemies and invulnerable to any form of damage. So let's just jump in here. So yeah, you'll see that I've, I've spawned just right where my camera was. And if I go up here, you'll see that the enemy does not respond to me in any way. This is a good way to just make sure your map is looking how you want it to look without having to deal with any enemies that you've placed. Also, in this mode, the map will not end. So even if you kill everyone in the map, you won't complete it. And if you have a timer or any other kind of fail condition, those will not be triggered. The map will play endlessly until you decide to quit. Also, you're still able to just pick up any of these pickups. I can grab the health. I can pick up this shotgun or grab this ammo. Everything else works as normal, just with those few minor differences that I've mentioned. All right, let's just uh, jump back into the map editor here. Now, with that all taken care of, let's turn our attention to our grass here for just a moment. You can see we've just got lots of grass all over here, but also inside our buildings here. You can see we've got grass growing up through the floor. We don't really want that, and we've also potentially got grass growing up through some of our props and stuff here. So let's go into our terrain tools. We've got our add vegetation right here. You can see I've got three types of vegetation already in my palette, and then I've got some empty slots. So just using the D-pad once again, I can increase my radius. So get a nice big circle here. And let's just start by hitting L2 and just getting rid of all of this grass and all of this vegetation that we have in the way here. It's just going to you know, muddy things up right now, so let's just get it out of the way. I think most of these trees are okay, but let's uh, just reduce our radius just by a little bit. There we go. And we'll just get rid of just some of these trees here. All right. Cool. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so that's enough cleared space for now. But now we can see that our ground is just very uniform. It's very green. It's just exactly the same the whole way. And nothing looks quite that pristine and perfect. So uh, I think we should see about adding some dirt. So go back to terrain tools and this time to our paint texture tool. Now you can see I've got two two textures already in my palette and two open slots. You've got grass on the ground and I've got stone on the cliff up there. So I'm just going to reduce my radius so I get it nice and small here so we're not doing too much. Just cut down the speed by quite a bit because we don't want it to just go down solid instantly. And our hardness and distortion which just give it a nice kind of feathered edge so it's not a hard line where the two textures transition from one to another. So I'm just going to select one of my, my empty slots here. We'll go down and find some nice dirt to use. 
Hmm. Okay, here we go. We've got dirt and rocks here in this one. That looks good. So we'll grab that. I'm just going to start over here. You can see if I paint down, I just get a nice little patch of rocky dirt. Let's just get rid of that for now. I'm going to start by just painting some of this around our objects. So we'll start with the rock here. It just helps it kind of stand out from, from the rest of the terrain. Just gives it a little bit of pop by adding some rocky dirt here around it. So I'll do that. Increase my radius again by a little bit and come over here to our building. So you just kind of want to use your you know, logic for where you're going to be placing your dirt. Anywhere that people move around. So around buildings and objects, especially right in front of doors and the like here. Anywhere where there's going to be foot traffic and there'll be people moving around, tearing up the grass and, and all of that, then you'll, you'll want to add in some dirt here. There's another door, so we'll add that. We'll make a little path coming out from that door. Be here at the base of the ladder as well. Okay, there we go. And once again, over here too, at the, the garage, we've got vehicles, and vehicles, as they drive in and out, you're going to tear up that grass as well, so we'll throw in some dirt and rocks here, make that look nice and roughed up. And we'll go around the perimeter of the building as well. We've got another door here at the back, so we'll make sure that gets a bit of dirt, and Let's even put a little path out from that door again as well. There we go. It's nice and quick. Well, let's also put a path in the front for if the, where the vehicles themselves have actually driven in and torn up that grass. Cool. There we go. We'll move on to our next building here. We've got the uh, bottom of the stairs and the door here. We'll get a bunch of dirt there. We can go under here around our boxes and around our turret. Uh, get some more around the perimeter of this building, and once again around our objects that we have placed here, our pallets and the like. Here, put it in front of the door. Just get all of this nice and roughed up. Just gives it a good lived-in look. Okay. Right, that building's pretty good. Do this palette a little bit more. Do this rock as well. Once again, it just helps it pop out from the environment a little bit. And everything doesn't look quite so bland. Okay, that's pretty good. We've got a good amount of, of dirt around our objects there. Oh, wait, we've missed the uh, our little shack here, so we'll throw some dirt down under there. Cool. Okay, I'm going to reduce my radius a little bit. Let's create some pathways here. And now let's just kind of rough up the area a little bit more, just kind of generally around the, the outpost. So again, just giving it a nice lived-in look, and just makes it seem as though people have really, you know, moved around this area and, and actually exist here. And it's not just a fresh, pristine environment that suddenly has a gunfight in it. path here. We'll go up on the little bit on the ledge. Okay. Cool. Alright, I think uh, there we have it. That's about as much uh, dirt. Oh, we'll do another little bit here. Let's create a path out into the into the woods. more around here. Cool. Alright, I think that's going to do. So now let's go back to our cliff face texture here. You can see we've got some kind of tall cliffs here that are still using a grassy texture. So we'll come here and adjust this minimum slope parameter. And that means that it's only going to apply the texture to terrain that is at least at a 20 degree slope now. As so you can see, I'm painting here and adding adding the texture, and so it will apply itself to these 
sharper parts, the, the more vertical parts of the cliff, but any of the the little bits that are a little flatter or as it you know flattens out near the ground or near the top, it will not apply the texture. So it gives it a, you know it gives you an easy way to uh, you know to paint down a cliff without accidentally you know painting the the ground or the top of it in a way that you don't want to. Okay. Now let's go back and uh, do some more vegetation. So we'll go back in here. You see I've got three. I've got grass, bushes, and trees. So let's just stick on grass right now and I'll reduce my brush radius nice and small. We'll just go in here and re-add the grass to anywhere we, where we've got the nice open grassy spaces. Over here as well and just everywhere. Just you, know, you don't want to paint the grass over top of our dirt texture here. We want to make sure that we can see the dirt through the grass. But if you get a little bit of grass on the dirt, that's no big deal. It's all good. Nothing's perfect. It even helps it look a little more natural. Uh, even if you miss, you know, some green areas and with the grass, that's fine as well. It doesn't need to be exactly right. We just want to show that we've got uh, grass where the grass texture is and not where the dirt texture is. Now also you can see we've got some grass growing through this cliff face texture. We don't want that either. The grass doesn't go through, grow through stone. So we'll just quickly get rid of that as well. Make that look a little more normal. Alright, cool. That's, uh, that's pretty good. So I'm going to go now over to... Oops, I got a square brush accidentally there. I'm just going to go over to bushes now and just keep filling in our open spaces here. Just now with... Uh, with some grass and bushes, it's a little, little bit different. We'll just kind of go a little more around the outskirts with our bushes here. Go along our path a little bit here, and just once again filling in any of these areas. Got nice vegetation all over our map. Okay, and now we'll do trees. Switch up and just put these trees kind of back over here where the where the forest was. Just yeah, add some more over here. We can make it a little more dense over here as well. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. We've got good amount of trees and good amount of grass and bushes and stuff and we've avoided the dirt so I think we're good. So now I'll show you so if I select the trees that I've already placed here in my palette I'll go in here and select something different. Let's select these uh, these red trees here. Give that a second to rework and now you'll see that all of those trees that I've previously put in place have changed to the new palette. But as you can see, this red doesn't really work here, so I'm just going to undo that. But that's just a really easy way to quick change any of the vegetation you've placed, so you can kind of try some different looks without too much more work. Okay, so remember that we placed these couple of guys here in our first wave, and they exist right as soon as the map starts. And then we also have our reinforcements over here, our gray mannequins that spawn when the alarm is rung. But we can also add something else pretty cool, which is our vehicle reinforcements. So I'll go here and back into our Add AI to a reinforcement wave and scroll all the way to the bottom. And you'll see we've got a bunch of vehicles here that we can pick from. And so these are vehicles that spawn with enemy AI already in them and all ready to go. So you don't have to worry about them finding a vehicle to use. So I'm just going to put one of these guys here, and it's really important to orient vehicle reinforcements in the direction you want them to drive right away, so they don't have to orient themselves after they spawn. And now, the next thing we want to put in is a road for our vehicle guy here. So under Terrain, we've got our road tool. You can see we've already got one set up there in our palette. So let's just make a nice road for this guy to come along a path. So we'll start here at the garage. If I hold down R2, and I can draw this first line, this first segment of my road. 
And after that, now I just need to tap R2, kind of wherever I want the next little node for the road, and it will just automatically connect it to the nearest one. Now you'll see there, as I added this road through the woods, that it actually removed the trees that were there. And that's because no vegetation can exist on a road. So you don't have to worry about avoiding it or uh, anything like that. So then also using R2, I can move these points like this, you see? Or I can add a new point in the middle with R2 as well. So just give these a little adjustments, get a nice smooth looking road. But here, even as I move it, you can see that vegetation underneath is removed. Alright, so now, just like the vegetation, we can actually go into the one that's already set up and give it a new look, and it will just automatically update with that. There's no need to replace the road or adjust it. It will just get the new look, just like that. We'll change it here to this footpath, and as you can see, it's all set up. No need to replace the road, so you can try a bunch of different looks if you would like. And now I want to show you our modifiers, which are some pretty cool little things we have added to really change up the way that your map works and the things that the player can do within the map you've made. So we'll go into it here and edit map. So you can see I can change the player's inventory, which are the weapons that they will spawn into the map with, from melee, throwables, empty slots, almost whatever you want, really. So let's just uh, go ahead and assign them this uh, stealth rifle here. You can also change up their skills, too. We'll just leave that at basic. And we'll also turn on infinite ammo here. There's lots of cool modifiers to check out, so definitely make sure you go through them when you're working on your map. So now let's look at the editor settings right here. And go in. You can see we can modify our camera speed and scroll, kind of turn on or off lots of things. But let's show you the nav mesh here. First, I'm going to start with the character. So you can see we've got this blue plane that gets put on here, and that displays everywhere that. NPCs can go. So up the stairs, inside the building here, you know, all over. And anywhere you see kind of a dark line is where the, play the NPCs will not be able to go. So now we'll switch over to vehicle. We can show you that. So now you can see that the, the spaces given around all the objects is, is more. It's, it's bigger spaces. You want to make sure that the vehicles don't hit objects so they get a little more leeway. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do group select, just make sure I grab both of these objects. I'm just going to give them a bit of a move here. Let's see now if we just give it a second, the nav mesh will automatically update. So you don't need to worry about telling it to do that or anything, it will just automatically make sure that your nav mesh is updated as it should be. I'll just go ahead and turn that off now. Now another cool thing we have for you to add is animals. So if we go back to our Add AI here, we've got Animals and Allies here as a section. We'll down and grab Animals now. Once again, there's just a ton of different animals that we can pick from while doing this. So let's start here with uh, some chickens. Chickens are pretty cute, everybody likes those. We'll uh, drop a couple of these guys here around the environment. Uh, now let's drop in an attack dog. I'll put him over here with this guy. Just give him a bit of a twist there. Alright, cool. Alright, what else do we got here? Let's check out some further down. Oh, here we go. We've got the honey badger. Let's go and drop the honey badger over here in the, wolf in the woods, because honey badger don't care. It's a good place for him. And, uh, yeah, let's see what else do we have we can do in. Oh, okay, see how we've got this cage over here under our little shack. Why don't we go ahead and put an animal inside that cage? Something vicious. Here we go, we've got a leopard. These guys are pretty wild. So we'll put him here in the cage. All right, there we go. Good stuff. Now with our animals in place, we want to put in something a little different. We'll go over here to our animation points. 
We've got some different options here, but I want to choose one for the animals. And so this is just a specified location where the, the char specified character is going to go and perform an animation. So let's do one for the attack dog. We'll just put it over here. We'll give it a bit of a rotation and you'll see that, that uh, it has a little arrow there that points uh, where the, the character is going to face when they're actually using this animation point. Now let's go down to one for characters. We've got this sit ground with eat and drink here. So let's drop it uh, right here next to this guy for him. Let's put one up here on the roof for this guy as well. Let's do this taking pictures one. Give it a little twist there so he's facing out from the roof. Now let's select it here and I'm going to press square to get into its options. I'm going to go down to the animation point options. So you see we've got duration, which is how long the character is going to stay at this point performing this animation. Then we have the cooldown, which is how long this animation point is unusable after it has just been used. And then the faction, of course, will determine whether allies, enemies, or both can make use of this animation point. So we'll come over here, we'll make a couple of small adjustments to, uh, to this one as well. Just give it a bit of a longer duration. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that'll do just nicely. Okay, so that's cool. So we've got some animation points here for animals and for uh, for the NPCs as well. So that's great. Just going to bring myself down a little closer to the ground here. And then holding down R3, I can push up to go back into that explore mode we discussed earlier. So here we are, we're in the map. You can see that guy walking right over to that point. And there he goes. He's going to have a seat on the ground there. Yeah, excellent. Oh, there you go. He's got a bottle of beer. He's just going to enjoy that by himself. Oh, and there's our dog. He's also attached to uh, to his idle animation point, so that's great. How about this guy on the roof? Well, looks like he's decided that the uh, machine gun is a more valid spot for him right now, but that's just fine. Alright. Perfect. Just gonna go back into the map editor now. Okay, and that is it. Congratulations, we have just completed our first basic outpost. So what we want to do now is publish our map online. So to do that, first we have to check our validation one more time. So we'll go here and take a look. You can see we've met all the specifications. All of our boxes are green, so we are good to go. We'll bounce over here to publish, jump in. Okay, so we'll leave the name as it is for now. We can also give it a real simple description from some uh, canned descriptions here. So we'll just select Village, and then we'll Publish. And so Publish is going to put your map up online for other players to download via the map browser. Uh, I'm not actually going to publish this particular map right now. I don't want to put this up online. Um, but yeah, that's where everyone will be able to see your work and enjoy your map. So now let's go ahead and play. See so here's our intro screen. It will give you the uh, objective as well as outline the modifiers that you have active. Here's our outpost. Let's get this party started. Cool, well, uh, thank you so much for joining me in this Far Cry 4 map editor tutorial. I sincerely hope that you've learned some cool stuff and I'm gonna get out there and make some awesome maps. Cool, well, uh, yeah, thanks again. Go ahead and have fun. Cheers.